dedicated to the strength of the nation. Proudly, we hail. Yes, proudly we hail, starring Preston Foster in From Buffalo, a United States Army and United States Air Force presentation. And now here is our producer, the well-known Hollywood showman, C.P. McGregor. Thank you, thank you, and greetings from Hollywood, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to your Theater of Stars, where topmost motion picture personalities join us in plays we know you'll enjoy. Our star is that well-known and highly popular actor, Preston Foster. And the title of our bright comedy, From Buffalo. In our story, Preston Foster portrays the patient father of a teenage girl with a hero worship complex. He unfolds an elaborate plan to end all complexes. Fate deals a hand and a plan of its own, just to make things more confusing. We'll have the curtain for act one of our comedy, From Buffalo, in just a moment, But first, here is our announcer, Wendell Niles, with a message of importance. Young men, here is your opportunity for an interesting job with a great future. Your opportunity to qualify for aviation cadet training with the U.S. Air Force. If you are between the ages of 20 and 26 and one-half, with at least two years of college, or the ability to pass an equivalent examination, make an appointment now for an interview. See if you can become an officer and a pilot in the U.S. Air Force. Get details today at the U.S. Army and U.S. Air Force recruiting station. And now, once again, our producer. It's curtain time, and here's Act One of From Buffalo, starring Preston Foster as Bob Livingston. The scene is in the living room of an American home just after dinner. It's quite a bit like many other American homes, the same nearly paid for furniture, the same fireplace, the same husband with the same evening paper. He's engrossed in the sports page and doesn't even bother to glance up as his slightly irritated wife strides in fiercely from the kitchen. I'll dry the dishes for you now, dear. I'd rather you didn't. Why not? Because I've already done the darn things. Well, you should have called me, Carol. You know I always like to help. Oh, I know. Sit down, dear. Take a big load off your feet. Thanks. You're much too kind to me. (sighs) Well, you needn't glare at me so. I'm not hurting anything. Oh, I'm not worried about the furniture. It's just that I don't think you should go throwing yourself around like... uh, Like Like a a young girl. Now, look. Don't go getting sore at me just because I didn't get out to the kitchen in time to help with those broken-down dishes. Uh, If it'll make you any happier, I'll go out there now and do them all over for you. Don't talk nonsense. We could avoid all this hassle every night if you'd only do what I told you. You mean that silly idea of getting paper plates and then erasing them? I didn't say anything about erasing them. I still think paper plates would be a simple answer to... It's ridiculous. Oh, Carol. Oh, well. You shouldn't have to worry about housework anyway. If anyone ought to help at all, it should be your daughter. I believe she's your daughter, too. How nice of you to share the blame. Somehow, it's hard to picture that kid with an apron on, isn't it? She'd be a lot more at home on the range where seldom is heard a discouraging word. Oh, now, now, please don't get worked up about that again. After all, Sue's just going through a phase, that's all. Yeah, a phase yet. I admit she spends too much of her time in her room, but it's nothing to worry about. She's just a nice, normal schoolgirl. <laughs> With a nice, normal crush on Daniel Boone. Really, dear, I wish you wouldn't place so much stress on Sue's fixation. It's only temporary. Temporary, ha! <laughs> That's what they all said when the mustache cup sales started falling off back in the 90s. Sue will get over this. After all, she's just a nice, impressionable kid. Oh, sure, sure, sure. But why does she have to go get impressed with Daniel Boone? I'm sure I don't know, dear. It's just one of those things. Well, I don't like any part of it. She even goes around trying to dress like the guy. Take that fine episode when she cut all those fringes in her good gabardine slacks just so they'd look like buckskin. She only did that once. You bet you're darn right she only did it once. After the talking to I gave her, she knew what side of her head was battered on. Oh, you were great, all right. Hey, wait a minute. Just whose side are you on, anyway, Mrs. Livingston? 
Well, yours, dear, of course. Yeah, sometimes I wonder. Anyway, uh, why can't she pick out some nice, normal sort of dream man? Most kids her age go for people like Frank Sinatra, Errol Flynn, or uh, Preston Foster. Who? Preston Foster. Who's he? The motion picture actor. Oh. But no, she has to go chase some far-gone old pioneer scout for her idol. Well, what's so terrible about that? I'll tell you what's so terrible. Why, well, the guy probably, probably smelled from buffalo. That'll do. You can say that again, sister. I don't like that evil glint in your eye. You're up to something. Right. Give that woman 20 silver dollars. Yes, Mrs. L., I finally decided to take steps. What kind of steps? Now, it might interest you to know that I've already started the wheels in motion to end this phobia of our daughter's. Oh, no, 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 not that. Now, please, Bob, no more harebrained schemes, huh? Harebrained, huh? But don't you fret your pretty little head. This is one plan that's like money in the bank. Can't miss. Oh, I only wish I was sure of that. You can be. Now, uh, where is Sue now? She's in her room studying. Studying? Hmm? Studying what? Uh, history, maybe? Say, uh, about the era of Daniel Boone? Oh, don't look so sly. You remind me of a part-time Humphrey Bogart. Well, don't worry about her anymore. Let her have her last fling. Tonight, I'll put an end to that baloney once and for all. N now, wait a minute. Now, 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 just what is this all about, huh? Oh, just a little harebrained scheme I cooked up. Uh, you see, um... I've gotten plenty fed up with this fixation the kids adopted, and I figured it wasn't any good for her or for us. Get to the point. Now, don't rush me. Anyway, I got to thinking it over, and finally I figured out a way to beat the game. What's the solution? Well, uh, you've heard me mention Johnny McCartan. Many times. Okay. Johnny's a swell actor, see? So I talked to him about Sue, and he agreed to put on a costume just like Daniel Boone wore and drop in unexpectedly tonight. What? Are you out of your mind? Mm, not any more so than usual. Uh, but you just keep your shirt on, will you? I know what I'm doing, you bet. Oh, I'll take that bet. Uh, don't interrupt. Just, li just listen. Now, Johnny can... The phone, dear. I hear it. I hear it. Livingston residence? Who? Oh, Mrs. Lowry. <laughs> uh, just fine, thank you. I suppose you want to talk to my wife, so I'll... Uh... Huh? Oh, sure, sure. We'll come over some Saturday night and uh, open a keg of nails or something. <laughs> now, uh, my wife's hovering over me, so I'll uh, just turn you over to her. Uh, Carol? For crying out loud, take this darn phone. Good night, Mrs. Lowry. Thanks, dear. Hello, Miss Lowry. How are you tonight? How are you tonight? <laughs> Stop that. What? Oh, I was just saying something to Bob. <laughs> You're such a tease. <laughs> yes, that's right. Uh, oh... Oh, we really must get together soon. After all, you're very close to us. It's the closest day in my note. Yes, we did plan to drop in on you last week, as a matter of fact, but what with all the work to be done around the house, you know... Uh, what? Oh, you've been gardening. Oh, yes, it's just wonderful. And the way things grow at this time of year. I'll say, only last week I planted a tiny little tree and already it's dead. Uh, what's that? You'll have to speak louder, dear. I've got a little competition here. Oh... Oh, I see. Oh, well, that sounds fine. I'd love to hear more about it. Sometimes I wish Donna Michi had never invented that doggone oh, thing. Oh, uh, look, dear, I, I think someone's at our door. I'll have to cut this short. But, but why don't you come over sometime and tell me all about it in detail? Yes, that's right. Goodbye. Uh, yes? Yes. And now, good... Oh, oh, really? Well, how nice. Well, goodbye. Oh, no fooling? <laughs> well, good... Good. What's that goo-goo stuff? Baby talk? Uh, uh, goodbye. Oh, oh, she's a wonderful woman, but she certainly does like to talk. What does she want? Oh, she had a pamphlet on child guidance. Ah, uh, pamphlets be darned. But getting back to you, Mr. Livingston, I'm still not sold on that fly-by-night scheme you're going to pull on our daughter. Now, look, please don't worry about it. Johnny can do that Western dialogue better than Boone himself could. So what? What are you trying to prove, anyway? That people are human. It's going to be mighty tough to do. I know, I know. But you've got to fight fire with water. We've tried arguing with a kid about this stuff and got nowhere fast. But tonight, we'll reason with her on her own childish level. Johnny will pop in and announce to her that he's good old Daniel Boone. I never heard of anything so crazy in all my life. Crazy, eh? Well, they laughed at Fulton, too, when he invented the ferry. He invented steam. All right, steam. I tell you, this can't miss. 
Anybody on cloud eight, like our little Susie, will believe anything she wants to. Oh, why do these things have to happen to me? Quiet, quiet. So when Johnny, or rather, uh, I should say, Mr. Boone explains in his own picturesque backwoods speech just why our little girl should get herself another dream man, she'll fall right in line. See? No. Look, you just trust in me, will you? It's a lead pipe cinch. Johnny and I went over to the public library this afternoon and dug up some pictures of Danny Boy uh, to use as our makeup guide. And, uh, I, I don't like it. I, I just don't think that this is going to... Believe me, this is going to be a whole lot better than having our kid run around the neighborhood making a darn fool of herself playing cowboys and Indians and, and Roy Rogers. Oh, I only hope you know what you're doing, that's all. I do. Now listen, Carol. I told Johnny to be here by seven sharp, see? Well, it's exactly one minute of now. Now, uh, call Sue down, will you? For the best effect, she really ought to be on the spot when he arrives. Now, really, I, I don't Go think... ahead, call her. But, Bob, I... Oh, well, all right. Oh, Sue! Yes, Mom? Will you please come down here a moment? Okay, Mom. Are you absolutely sure this is going to work out all right? Sure, I'm sure. What do you think? I'm not sure? Now, don't worry, will you? I never saw anybody... Oh, Shh, here she comes. Hey, Mom, did you want me for something real important? You see, I promised Joan Paby and I'd go next door for a tiny little while and Nope, then... nope, nope. Can't tonight. Daddy, why not? I go next door loads of times. I know, but, uh, well, um, t tonight's sort of something special, you see. Your, your mommy and I... No, uh... no, not your mommy, dear. Just your daddy. That's a nice gal. Okay, Sue, just me. I planned a little surprise for you. Golly, Ned, what is the surprise, Daddy? What is it, huh? Guess, dear. Okay, now let me see. I'll bet it's a swell hunting knife. No, no, it's not a hunting knife. Uh... Is it a genuine hand-plated leather lariat? Uh, keep guessing, keep guessing. Okay, uh... I know. It's a fire by friction set. No, it isn't a fire by uh, friction set, Sue, but uh, you're getting warm. Oh, gee, this is keen. Let me get some more, huh, Daddy? Oh, sure, by all means. I know. It's a black and white pinto pony. Not with oats at their present price. Okay. Golly, I just can't imagine what... It's him. Oh. Uh, uh, Danny, uh, well, you'll see. Uh, uh, now, don't go away, nobody, and uh, 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 don't, don't get nervous, anyone. Uh, everything's going to be just... Uh... Come in. Evening, folks. What? Why, it's Daniel Boone. We pause briefly from our story from Buffalo, starring Preston Foster, to bring you an important message from our government. Ladies and gentlemen, our Army and our Air Force are critically short of physicians and dentists. Over 2,000 volunteers from these two professions are urgently needed today to safeguard and care for the health of the men and women who, as members of the United States Army and United States Air Force, are serving you and me at home and overseas. Young physicians and dentists, particularly those who did not serve in the armed services during World War II, have been asked by their government to act now to volunteer for duty at once. If you are one of these young physicians or dentists, please write or wire either the Surgeon General of the United States Army or the Air Surgeon of the United States Air Force at once and volunteer your services. If you know one of these young physicians or dentists, please call his attention to this urgent message. Thank you. Our curtain rises on Act Two of From Buffalo, starring Preston Foster as Bob Livingston. Bob and his wife, Carol, are faced with a rather unusual situation. Their teenage daughter, Sue, has adopted Daniel Boone for her idol, much to the discomfiture of Bob. It preys on his mind to such an extent that he finally coaxes a friend to put on a costume, a la Daniel Boone, and try to talk the girl out of her strange phobia. Now, the make-believe Boone has just entered the Livingston house. <laughs> evening, folks, evening. Well, uh, evening, Mr. Boone. Boone. Yes, sir. Oh, Daniel brother. Boone's what they call me. Uh, well, this is Mommy and, and Daddy, Mr. Boone. Uh, glad to know you. Same here, Mr. Boone. Uh, thank you, I'm sure. Uh, may I take your coonskin cap? No, ma'am, no, ma'am. <laughs> thank you, just the same. Well, uh, have a chair, a uh, nice hard seat and everything. Uh, no, thanks, no, thanks. I can't stay but just a minute. Uh, Mr. Boone, please. <laughs> just call me Daniel. Oh, very well. Daniel. Yeah, that's better. That's better. I, uh, I know you're right here in front of us and all, but but aren't you supposed to be... Dead? <laughs> no, daughter, no. 
I'm too ornery a cuss to stay put for long. Would you uh, mind telling us one thing, Mr. Boone? We, uh... Oh, hold it, hold it there. Before this goes any further, let's put a stop to this year Mr. Boone business right now. What I told the little gal there goes for all of you. Okay, Danny boy. <laughs> That's more like it, sir. Yes, sir. You know, out in the open forest, a fella sort of gets away from them uh, little bitty formalities. Oh, yes, yes. I can see how that'd be. <laughs> Did somebody say something funny? <gasps> oh, mister, I mean, Daniel, you'll have to excuse my daddy. Sometimes he's sort of, well, corny. Susie? I think I know what you mean, daughter. Uh, Sue, dear, remember your manners. You really mustn't stare at our guests like that. It's embarrassing. Don't bother me, none. I'm sorry, Daniel. It's just that I, I can't get over the way you look. Exactly like, well, like you do in the history books. Is that so unnatural? I must admit you do look unusually remarkable. Remarkable? Nothing. Well, that's a terrific makeup. I, I, I mean, you really look exactly like the role you're playing. Bob. Uh, yes, dear. Um, look, uh, Daniel, uh, we don't want to pry into your private affairs or anything like that, of course, but tell us. How come you happen to honor us with this visit tonight? Question, son, and deserves a fair answer. Sure, I'll tell you why I'm here. It's because of this year little girl. Me? Yep. Oh, I've been planning this move for a long time now. And finally, I figured it was just about right for me to step in and clear up a few odds and ends once and for all. Uh, you mean like this farce of Sue setting you up as her dream man and making a laughing stock of herself and us? Uh, is that what you mean, Daniel? I'll get to it, son. I'll get to it. Sorry, sorry. Uh... Uh, you should be. Now, Sue gal, I guess I was uh, what some folks might call an old, uh, well, uh, a colorful character, I guess. You certainly are. Was. You mean were. Don't make no difference how you say it. And it's easy to see how maybe some young people might sort of set me up on a pedestal. I'll say. Especially boys. But whether they're boys or gals, they shouldn't. They shouldn't? No, sir, Risa, they shouldn't. You see, I was just another fella doing his work. If any dangers happened to come along, well, that was all part of it, see? I guess so. A lot of other folks faced dangers in other ways than mine. And they were bigger men than me, too. Oh, but I don't think... Oh, not in size, maybe. But bigger, just the same. There was one fella in particular. I remember a letter he wrote me. I tore it out of a book. I got it here someplace. I, uh, yeah, here, here she is. Here, son. My eyes ain't so good no more. You read it out loud. Oh, but I... Uh... Read it! Look, I, I really don't... Uh... Oh, all right, um... Gentlemen, we are facing a time of peril so grave in our history that there is now only the choice of serving the country a little longer or having tomorrow no country to serve. Under the favor of Almighty, a time is not distant when we choose between war or peace. In the words of Tom Paine, these are times that try men's souls. Tyranny is not easily conquered. Yet we have this consolation with us at the heart of the conflict, the more glorious the triumph. It is dearness alone that gives everything its value. And it would be strange indeed if so celestial an article as freedom should not be highly rated. It's signed by George Washington. Give it back to me, son. Thank you. Then uh, there was another man, uh, Abe Lincoln. And if you want to come right on up to date, General Eisenhower. Now, Sue, if you want a real hero, you pick somebody like that. Put an old codger like me clean out of your mind. But, but, Daniel, I just couldn't. Now, see here, gal, you just listen to your parents, will you? Oh, but, gee, I... Forget all about old Daniel Boone, will you? Come on, now, promise. I... All right, Daniel, if you say so. I say so. Well, I reckon I just about... Plum wore out my welcome here, gabbing away like that. Oh, not at all, oh, not at perfectly all. perfectly welcome. Think I'd best be moseying along. Well, then, uh, I'll show you to the door. What for? I ain't blind, you know. Oh, well, it's no bother. It's right this way. Uh, goodbye, Daniel. Uh, goodbye. Uh, thanks for dropping in. Uh, nice going, Johnny. Nice going. You're a strange one, you are. Well, so long, everybody.
I'm glad that's all over. Sue's asleep now. She is? Good. Well, that was sure mighty fine evening's work now, wasn't it, Mrs. Hill? Yes, it was. And, Bob, you can stop talking like Daniel Boone. He's gone, you know. Well, it's kind of catchy, that homespun stuff. Say, now, aren't you uh, sorry you doubted your little old husband's plan? Stop gloating, for heaven's sakes. The law of averages gives you at least one hit out of a dozen tries, you know. <laughs> you can't get me mad tonight, sugar. No, sir. Admit this was one great scheme. Come on, now. Well, frankly, I'm surprised at the way Sue absorbed the whole business. Mm, you bet. I can't take all the credit. To... Oh, who can that be at this hour? It's probably Danny Boy again. Oh, don't be silly. Come in. Why, Mrs. Lowry. Good evening, folks. I'm so sorry to drop in on you like this. Oh, it's perfectly all right, dear. I just had to let you know what I was talking about on the phone before. I won't stay a moment, but here's a pamphlet that explains everything, Carol. Oh, let me see it. Uh, child guidance and the dangers of parental interference. Oh, sounds very interesting. Look, Mrs. Lowry, I just interfered in my child's life tonight, and it worked out swell. I beg your pardon? Oh, don't pay any attention to Bob. He's such a joker. I'll be happy to read this over, Miss Lowry. Thanks for dropping by. Yes, well, good night anyway. Good night. <laughs> Why didn't you let me tell her how I straightened our kid out? Silly pamphlets aren't the way to bring up kids. Practical knowledge, that's what does it. Well, it did you seem... you got to hand it to old Johnny McCartan, too. He sure did a swell job. He even surprised me the way he followed through. You know, somehow I, I sort of pictured him as a younger man. Well, he is a younger man. It's just that his makeup was so perfect. Well, he's only a year older than I am. Well, you're not exactly in the Margaret O'Brien class, you know. Quiet, please. Hmm. It wasn't all the skies that made him so convincing, either. A couple of times there, I forgot he was just acting out of part. Especially near the end when he, uh, especially near the end when he... The phone, dear. I hear it. It's probably for you anyhow, one of your stale club members. Will you answer it, please? Yes, my darling. Livingston residence? Hmm? Huh? Oh, you know, that's funny. We were just, uh, we were just discuss... Huh? What's that? Who is it? Shh. Oh, no, 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 not you. I was just telling Carol to keep quiet. Yeah. Oh, uh-huh. Well, uh, all I got to say is your pal did a fine job. Huh? Wait a minute. Say that. Say that again, will you? I see. Okay. Okay. So long. Well, who was it? Johnny McCartan. Oh? A cop picked him up in his Daniel Boone costume on the way over here, and Johnny just called to apologize for not getting over. Oh, but the man he sent was simply perfect. That's just it. Johnny didn't send anybody. He didn't? Then who was that man? I don't know. Do you smell buffalo? The curtain falls in the final act of From Buffalo. Our star, Preston Foster, will return from a curtain call after this timely message from Wendell Niles. This is important. This is urgent. Over 2,000 young physicians and dentists are needed as volunteers at once for service in the United States Army or United States Air Force. These physicians and dentists are required to safeguard the health of the men and women who are serving our country in the armed services. If you are a physician or a dentist, you are needed now. Write or wire the Surgeon General of the United States Army or the air surgeon of the United States Air Force at once, volunteering for active duty. Let me repeat that. Write or wire the Surgeon General of the United States Army or the air surgeon of the United States Air Force today. Or see your local U.S. Army and U.S. Air Force recruiting station. Now back at the microphone, our star, Preston Foster, and our producer. Press, you've got me at a loss. Well, how come, C.P.? Well, you have too many activities to pin any one thing down for an interview. How about your latest pictures? Can I uh, mention both? Sure, why not? Well, uh, Screen Guild Productions made I Shot Jesse James. That was with Barbara Britton. And the other one in Technicolor is The Big Cat. This one is an Eagle Lion production. With Lon McAllister and Peggy Ann Garner. I saw them both and they were very good. You know, I was going to talk to you about that 500-acre ranch of yours, but I've changed my mind since I heard about that sensational act of you and your wife, Sheila, put on at the Orpheum in San Francisco. Well, thanks, C.P., but uh, don't forget my guitar. It's in the act, too. 
Uh, Sheila tells me as soon as I learn three more chords, I can go into politics. <laughs> or hire yourself out to play square dances. With your knowledge of folk songs, you could be a big hit around Hollywood. Oh, that's what I'm afraid of, but uh, you can believe it or not, we did our first square dancing just the other night. Uh, have they roped you in yet, C.P.? No, I guess I'm the only one around here that doesn't go in for square dancing. But we've got some real experts who are old-timers at it. Well, it's certainly a lot of fun. Uh, we went to this party and everybody had on costumes. I got real enthused. First thing you know, I was doing the calls. Oh, they got you off the dance floor. Say, I wondered why all of a sudden I was elected <laughs> caller. <laughs> I didn't last very long at that job either. The neighbors, you know. Got a little loud, huh? Well, I'm not exactly a blushing violet, you know. Uh, then they asked me to play my guitar. That should have been safe, and you just happened to have it along. <laughs> <laughs> you know how it is. Sure. Anyway, we had a lot of fun, and uh, Sheila and I are both very enthusiastic. Press, here's something for your enthusiasm. A couple of square dance albums calls music and instructions. Next time, you'll be an expert. Well, thank you. Thanks very much, C.P., and I can, uh, I can sure stand a little expert instruction. Uh, now, before I leave, uh, who's your star next week? Next week, press and ladies and gentlemen, we have another comedy in store for you, a bright romance comedy starring popular Edmund O'Brien in a play titled Take a Letter, Miss Devlin. In our story, O'Brien becomes a confidential consultant to the big boss of a department store for which he is general manager. Rival department stores buy in business and expansion, and Eddie's boss has a stratagem for a building coop in a new location which he tells Eddie about in confidence. There is a secretary who tries to save Eddie for herself and from himself, and a charmer who tries to charm his secret for herself. So all around, Eddie becomes quite a man with the ladies. Well, she'll be listening, and thanks again for those albums. Thanks very much. So long, C.P. Goodbye, Charles. Be sure to join us next week, ladies and gentlemen, when we bring you Edmund O'Brien and Take a Letter, Miss Devlin. Till then, thanks for listening, and cheerio from Hollywood. <laughs> Foster appeared through the courtesy of the Hollywood Coordinating Committee, which arranges for the appearance of all stars on this program. The script was by Bill Danch, with music under the direction of Eddie Dunstetter. This program is transcribed in Hollywood for release at this time. Wendell Niles speaks.